Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. We got some good news and some bad news. The good news is, is that most people are too stupid to watch this channel and concern themselves with matters of preparedness. And that puts us well ahead of the survival curve. Okay, all you have to do is devote a modicum of time to some journalistic investigation about what is going on around the world. Just 15 minutes a day is all you need to be well ahead of of the ignorant masses and that's a great thing but the bad news of course is is that most of those ignorant people are going to turn into zombies that we're likely going to have to deal with when it all hits the fan now is that a elitist statement absolutely is but it's okay to have fun sometimes and jokes are good jokes are good for the soul now I will say though guys that SHTF is a process it's not an event it's not something that abruptly happens and suddenly we're thrust into the fictional universe of the book of Eli. It's not going to be so black and white and so clear cut. There's going to be nodal points throughout the process that are noteworthy. But if you look at all of the unprecedented events that have transpired in the last three years, if any honest person who is not just taking what they have for granted right now looked at that, they would realize that something is seriously wrong in the world. We are in a slow burn decline in terms of the degradation of our way of life. And it's very easy for somebody who still has Wi-Fi and still has water coming out of their taps to go in the comment section and talk about how, oh, here I am talking about how the sky is falling day after day. Well, I am because it is. It's just a process. It's not an event. Okay, so today... To tack on to all of the things that are going on in the world, California has declared a state of emergency due to wildfires, record-setting heat waves, and potential blackouts that are caused by heavy demands on the electrical grid due to air conditioners and electric vehicles. So much to the point that they are telling people they can't charge their EVs during peak times. I wonder if they plan for this when they're planning for their 2035 eradication of ice vehicles what do you guys think about that gavin newsom declared a state of emergency wednesday to increase power production and urge residents to reduce electricity as officials warned there would be possible outages if conditions worsen they're talking about temperatures that are 10 to 20 degrees above normal and we are feeling it here too today we're getting some smoke we're getting some wind we're getting some plus 30 degrees yesterday uh, my thermometer hit 37 degrees so it's starting to look apocalyptic around here as well and we're going to see sweltering temperatures throughout the weekend this could be the weekend when the big fires start around north america because uh, we're going to see some blistering heat in the coming days ahead so stay hydrated uh, prepare for that in the best way you can if you can in, in terms of energy rationing if you can have one room where you're you're cooling and the same thing that you would do in winter time if you're trying to keep warm you don't want to heat unused space you don't want to cool unused space if you can you know control the climate that you're in uh, that's going to save you money because we know a lot of people are hurting with the price of energy as well too they're talking about 115 degrees possible temperatures okay this is just absolutely nuts so can you imagine what it's going to be like when everybody is driving an ev in the future i mean they they have not thought this through at all um, it's going to be bad. And what I imagine is going to happen is that there are, is just going to be new regulations brought in. Now it was brought to my attention prior to making this video, uh, by one of our customer service reps that apparently people are having their smart meters meddled with. Now take this with a grain of salt because I cannot, uh, guarantee this is 100% true. And I always tell you guys that when i'm presenting you with information which is questionable but apparently some people are saying that due to the uh, increased power demands on the grid people's smart meters are being regulated to prevent people from using their air conditioners now again even if that's not true there's probably a kernel of truth to that even if it's possible okay when you look at all of the smart technology 
going online, it's very easy to think how this will be used to distribute resources in the future and to allot you your daily ration and to track and make sure that you're only using your rationed amount of energy or whatever the case might be. Um, that's just going to be the new normal in the future. There's no way around it except to go off grid. Even Gavin Newsom, he's using my terms here. The reality is we're living in the age of extremes, extreme heat and extreme drought. Yes, and I've actually used this term not only to talk about weather anomalies like extreme flooding and the aforementioned, but also extreme political ideologies, okay? Extreme conflicts. Everybody, everything is going to be extreme moving forward here in the future. And uh, I would encourage you guys on the topic of, you know, fact checking what I say, I always get these comments in the comment section. Why don't you provide sources? Look, everything I say on this channel, you are one Google search away from discovering whether or not it's true. I mean, 90% of what I see, some things you're going to have to go and do a bit more digging. Some things are because we run a prepping store and that allows me to get the inside scoop on what is going on in the industry because we know, okay, is there a shortage of gas masks? What might that mean? Is there a shortage of potassium iodide pills? What might that mean? Is there prices going to be increasing? I always give you guys the heads up when I know that price increases are coming down the pike. But listen to this. If you cannot go and do a simple Google search, you can just kiss your ass goodbye if the shit actually hits the fan. I mean, if you are inconvenienced to go down and type a few letters into this amazing uh, library of Alexandria that we have at our fingertips, you are not going to survive a few days. Okay, so if you want to fact check what I say, go on this amazing invention called Google and figure out if it's true or not. It's as simple as that. We talk about like 50 to 100 different stories that I'm referencing. I print off dozens of articles a day. I cannot possibly link them all in the description below just because you are too damn lazy. Get off your entitled ass. Actually, you can sit on your entitled ass. Just get off this video and go and type it in. Anyways, um, apparently Margita Simonian, she's the chief editor, I believe, of RT. Uh, she says that either we win in Ukraine or World War III begins. Personally, I consider the, part, the path of the Third World War to be the most realistic because knowing us, knowing our leader, Vladimir Putin, the most incredible thing is that in the end, it will all end in a nuclear strike. This seems to me more likely than the other possibility. One of Russia's main news outlets, uh, at least one that caters to Western media, there's also TASS, and Pravda and uh, among others but uh, that is one of the most notable ones and they're saying that and actually she said this a while ago but it's starting to look more and more like the war rhetoric is moving towards that possibility and uh, so you know like I say it's a slow burn it's not going to happen overnight just because it didn't happen yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen it just means that it's a slow process um so the sky is falling, but even the sky falling, even if you look at that metaphor, the sky is continuously falling. The sky is always falling. So it's a great metaphor for SHDF. Uh, they're talking about the biggest drop in living standards in a century is coming to Britain. That sounds like fun. This is a noteworthy story. Uh, NVIDIA, their stock is tumbling because the U.S. has now limited chip exports the China. Remember I said it's all about the chips. They don't want to provide chips to China or Russia that can be used for military purposes by a military end user. And of course, in artificial intelligence, because the race is on for AI, because AI can do things. AI can win wars. AI can predict the future in some cases. So this is this is the, the start of the third world war it starts with a trade war if you're going to limit uh, china's access to these chips and you're trying to you know uh, align yourself with taiwan and send 1.1 billion in weapons to taiwan then china will start firing back and then the united states will fire back with some more stuff and it will just escalate from there okay um 
what else do we got going on today? This, this was kind of funny. This is from Newsweek. And they were criticizing Russia ordering 1,200 civilians to go to war amid counteroffensive. Uh, they were cr criticizing their conscription efforts. Now, as far as I know, and I could be wrong, but these conscription efforts were well underway for the other side for the last six months. In fact, I think even women are going to have guns put in their hands come October 1st. So that's something worth noting. Anyways, uh, the leader behind Daria Dugina plot, she was the one who was uh, assassinated in Russia. They were targeting her father. Says that Putin's end will come quietly. The leader of the group that claimed responsibility for the death of Dugina predicted that the end of the Russian President Vladimir Putin's reign will happen quietly and fearfully. And he says that he's going to be removed by the elites if... He doesn't uh, do what they want him to do, I guess. Uh, that's one line of thinking. Other people think he controls the elites. Other people think that the elites control him. Regardless of what happens, if Putin is removed, it's likely that the war will get even worse. Because by some people's metrics anyways, Putin is more moderate than a lot of the other people who might take up his position of running the country. What do you guys think in the comments section below? That's really all I got for you today. There's a whole manner of stuff going on. The markets are crashing. What else is new? I mean, it's it's just becoming a, a constant thing as long as you are staying prepped because we all know tomorrow is going to bring with it some other unprecedented, unprecedented event. And let me know in the comment section, what do you think it's going to be next? Are we going to see uh, the stock market nosedive? Is there going to be a Bitcoin crash? Is there going to be some, you know, crazy incident emerge that's going to trigger a riot? Is there going to be some uh, general strike emerge in Europe? You know, is there going to be a massive influx of refugees from flooded out Pakistan that has seen a biblical deluge of epic proportions? What's going to happen? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper out.